Hey guys, um, this video is going to be about Tehar de Chardin. If you're not familiar with him, he was a Jesuit mystic philosopher and scientist um, oh, and priest. He wrote a lot of famous books, including The Phenomenon of Man, and I'm currently doing a little thesis on him, so I thought I would just share some of the stuff that I'm learning. Um, and I guess to sum up, because uh, I, I keep coming back to this uh, story that's in one of his uh, um, biographies, he was a medic in World War One, and um, he, while on the front line, uh, he with the French army, he witnessed a lot of death, a lot of destruction, but he always saw that in a, in in return or almost in response to such chaotic, destructive um, warfare, humans were capable of organizing greater and greater unity in response to that. Now, they would call this unity, of course, you know, for France or uh, for one ideology or nation or the other, but for Tehar, he saw this as some kind of other underlying spiritual force which brought things together in the midst of chaos. So in the midst of chaos, there is order. And that idea um, was the inspiration for when he began to think about evolution from a, almost a teleological, a phenomenological point of view. Um, where he saw evolution as always being on the edge of chaos, yet somehow always um, coming together and converging in greater unity. And he thought this was quite an amazing phenomenon, and perhaps animated by this, what he called at that time, a thing. But eventually he would come to call that spirit. So Teilhard had a very mystical view of evolution. Um, but as a phenomenon, um, and when he wrote The Phenomenon of Man, he thought that it would, you could present this um, to the scientific community and not have it completely shunned because... Um, despite whether or not you believe in spirit or God, or as he called it, the Omega Point, um, there was a weird phenomenon going on in life. I mean, it wasn't weird for him. He thought it totally made sense. But if you think about it, we are always evolving towards greater, greater forms of complexity. Not even um, human beings have remained the same since their um, time as a hunter-gatherer so, uh, uh, society. So there's just a very strange tendency for life to continually become more complex, to add new layers, and not just disjointed layers, but harmonic um, equilibriums. So the whole of evolution for Tehard was this movement, this directed chance, which he thought was a great example uh, on the battlefield. There's a movement, but there's a lot of chaos amongst that movement, but it's a groping for something greater, for something more. Uh, for transcendence in a way, and he saw life as this sort of groping um, proto-consciousness moving and moving towards an awakening, which in his eyes um, started with the emergence of human beings, or um, I guess before human beings too, but he believed that life was trying to um, center upon itself and gain more complexity at the same time, not just, you know, endless fractal complexity, but um, a more unified, convergent complexity as time went on. And consciousness, he thought, was an inevitable um, turn of events in one form or another after aeons of groping and groping. Um, he thought, you know, we will eventually reach a point where you, uh, some type of consciousness will emerge, and that would be us. Um, and he goes through evolution, and he tries to scientifically or phenomenologically discover a few points that make sense and, and, and confirm this. And to him, the development of the nervous system and the sensitivity to the world um, was part of that complexity. Uh, the development of the eye and the ear, and etc. The centering of an organism and aware of its environment, and then and humans finally taking that awareness and turning it upon itself, reflective consciousness. And he believed this was just another evolution of the cosmos, another folding over of complexity in life. 
and he believed eventually in the, in the mystical part of his teachings that we were moving back towards God, we were evolving towards God again, and love or spirit was the animating force in the universe that despite being chaotic and at the verge of randomness, it wasn't random at all, it was a direction, it was a pull, and he believed humans, uh, in our in our time, in our place, we were going through something very similar um, in our own kind of microcosm, but he saw humans as sort of like the crux, a very important part, and if we didn't do it, then life would have to develop consciousness another way and start over again. But, um, we're at the point where he believed that, uh, as he said, the age of nations has passed, um, and it's time now to build the earth or something like that. So he, he believed that humans would eventually get past their fragmentation and join together in common spirit and common ideology, uh, what he called ideology, I think. We're sort of getting past that. We're seeing it a little bit differently. But he believed that eventually there would be um, planetary culture, planetary civilization, and the technology for that to be so. And interestingly enough, I'm talking to you here on the internet. Uh, so, I don't know. What's that about? So, um, yeah, he, he believed that eventually, in, in a sense, Earth was growing a brain, and that brain was human beings. And we haven't really developed into ourselves and our potential yet, but we're still in the midst of... Uh, our own evolution and our own development. And he called it often planetization or planetary culture. And now we call it globalization, or, you know, um, I don't know, mobile communications, internet, um, network society. These things are very similar to what Tehard was describing in his own, uh, in his own work. So it's interesting how, uh, believe what you want about spirit, but as a phenomenon, for the universe to become more complex over time, there's definitely something to that, and it's acknowledged, I think, by scientists, but it's just not studied specifically as a phenomenon as much as the technical details of biological evolution are. The macro picture, the, the, the weird, bigger picture, we don't know what it is as a final thing, but I think what Teilhard was saying was, well, we can at least take a look at it and learn something from this strange thing that's going on, this pull towards greater complexity and more consciousness. Um, and to bring it back again again into a modern perspective, um, the singularity itself is very similar uh, because Kurzweil and these similar people, uh, I don't know if they read Tate Hart or not, but they sound just like a modern version of him from a more material, scientific um, technological standpoint, where we believe evolution had a driven direction towards greater complexity, and the next unfolding of evolution that will be able to transcend and include, you know, the former processes, you know, consciousness and complexity, would be technological, um, the age of intelligent machines and spiritual machines. And uh, Kurzweil believed this very much. And he uses exponential maps and exponential diagrams to show how we've been increasing in technology over time. And how future sentient beings will be beyond human. They'll be more human than human. They'll be capable of doing more than we can. And not just physiologically, not just living longer, but actually having um, more consciousness more capabilities, more potential, and humans are supposed to, from maybe a Tehard's point of view, if, if Tehard was around today and he saw this, maybe he would say, we're meant to sort of do that, but um, just to keep in mind one last thing about Tehard, he was also very aware of the need for uh, balance with nature and to see us as a part of nature, so this isn't sort of like an escape pod, you know, the singularity isn't, isn't an escape pod, at least, I don't think you would think that, but, um, it's more of a emerging complexity and unity with the whole of life, at a whole new level, but at any rate, um, yeah, Tehard Deshardan, very interesting guy, I'll make some new videos a little bit later about specifics, but thanks for listening.